Welcome back. I think I've had the most brilliant idea. Had been feeling like my brain was going to explode for a couple of days. Didn't really know why. But then Saturday morning it, uh, it surfaced. I'll show you what I've come up with and um, and try to explain why why it's so good. Why I think this will work. First some explaining of a typical two-stroke cylinder and how things work with my PIP cylinder as, uh, as an example. And you can see the transfers are much lower than the exhaust port and there's a lot of there's a lot of weird angles. It's uh, like this this angle, this angle, this angle, and uh, also the upward angle. So the the angles like this are also really important. If this transfer is aimed differently than this transfer, that will cause bad scavenging. And scavenging is how well the cylinder fills up with fresh charge while at the same time expelling the spent gases out the exhaust. As this is so important, you can't just make the ports as wide as you want or angle them differently to, to create more effective area. There, there has to be a, a certain kind of way. Also, the blowdown phase is all important. So that's the phase where the exhaust port is open, but the transfers haven't opened yet. Ideally, you want cylinder pressure to drop below crankcase pressure before the transfer ports open. Okay, short introduction, probably as confusing as always. Now, say you wanted to put a supercharger on this engine. Let's pretend that's connected to the crankcase. So this would obviously do something. One problem though is that the transfers are always open the same time as the exhaust port. So whenever this thing tries to build pressure in the cylinder, there's always a big gaping hole there where that pressure will just escape. There won't be much of uh, pressure. You can use a pipe and you can make this work. With some back pressure and a proper pipe, you will build some pressure, but uh, not ideal. Initially, I had the idea of using uh, a rotary valve in the exhaust duct. In that way, I could shut off the exhaust on the upstroke and uh, allow the blower to build some pressure. But as soon as the piston travels above the transfers, it won't build more pressure in there, or the blower won't supply more fresh charge into the cylinder because the transfers are closed. Okay, but this would work. This would probably produce more power than without the blower and, the, and that rotary valve. Let's have a look at my new design. So I introduce to you the brute force scavenging concept. That's EFSC <laughs> for short. So it's not the FOS, Fritz Overmars concept. It's not Luke Fokema's concept. This is uh, similar but different. And it's the brute force scavenging concept. So what's going on here? And keep in mind, this is just a quick, uh, quick sketch. Just to, I just want to know how how things will work together and how, I, how I'll do it in the proper cylinder. I'm also going to design this so that I can make it on my, my three axis mill. So uh, it will be made in sections and there will be a sleeve. It will be kind of crude, this first one. If the concept works, we'll 3D print a better one. First of all, the crankcase is not being utilized here. It's uh, just closed off. The blower is connected directly to the intake and the intake is connected directly to the transfers. There's a rotary valve on the exhaust duct, meant to be used with a normal piston, normal piston ring, nothing special at all. I'll go into section view and show you the inner workings here. What you're looking at here is the exhaust duct. There are four symmetric exhaust ports and this is the duct that connects them. And if we go lower down here, this is the intake duct and it connects to these four transfer ports here. Symmetric transfer ports. So there's four exhaust ports, four transfer ports, symmetric. Those transfer ports are aimed 30 degrees upwards. The exhaust ports are just aimed straight out. And that's for ease of machining for me. Ideally, they would be aimed down, I think, more. You might notice that all the ports are the same height, exhaust ports and transfer ports. It has a timing of 190 degrees. I'm not quite sure which timing will work best there. There's not supposed to be uh, an expansion chamber. So, so, so like the resonance doesn't matter anymore. To think I'm going away from resonance. That's, uh, <laughs> I said brute force. This is brute force. 
So by just looking at this, you think this won't work at all, but I think it will. There's also a read valve here between the compressor and the intake, that's important. Let's pretend the piston is at bottom dead center. So now the blower is forcing mixture into the intake and up through the transfer ducts, aimed straight at the top of the cylinder. So it's filling the, the upper part of the cylinder here. There's big gaping exhaust holes, which will cause a lot of short circuiting, but the rotary exhaust duct valve is closed, so it can't escape. So the, there will be pressure building up in the cylinder and in the ducts surrounding it. This disc valve can also be a drum valve. Ken Sieber, I, I saw your message there. I'm, I'm going to send you an email, but uh, it's just a, a stand-in for whatever will be there. The cylinder is 50 cc. The blower I've ordered is uh, 300 cc per revolution. So this means it will try to cram much more into that cylinder than what's possible. But remember, there's a lot of volume outside the cylinder. All the ports are open and mixture in the cylinder and also in the ducts surrounding it will be pressurized, compressed. The piston is moving up and you might notice the transfers are just as high as the exhaust ports. So there's much more time area for transfer here. I actually did a little uh, quick thing in Engmod and with these transfers, it, they can support 100 horsepower. I don't think that's possible, but it, they can support flow wise, they will support that. That's insane. But anyways, so it won't stop uh, pressurizing or compressing the mixture until these big high ports close. And that should produce a lot more pressure in there than with a conventional design. So now the piston moves up, there's a uh, combustion and the piston starts moving down with spent gases in there. The piston uncovers both the exhaust and transfer ports. They're at the same height, so all the ports will be uncovered at the same time. Exhaust gas will flow into the exhaust duct, but also into the transfer ducts and into the intake. But remember, there's a reed valve here. A steel reed valve, I think, is uh, probably a good idea. Exhaust can't es escape into the blower. The rotary valve is open and exhaust can't escape out the exhaust duct. Exhaust gases will be expelled out that exhaust duct. And as soon as pressure in the ducts and in the cylinder is lower than what the blower is trying to force into it, the reed valve will open and the blower will start expelling spent gases and filling up the ducts and the cylinder again. Now, this might cause a lot of short circuiting, but my plan here, and now I'm keeping the reed valve open, at least to bottom dead center, and the plan is just to blow or brute force, force lots of mixture through the ducts, through that cylinder and out the exhaust. So this will be definitely be one of the most fuel inefficient two strokes ever. But I don't care, I'm just after power here. What we're doing now is flushing the whole thing with fresh mixture. Just flushing the whole thing. Spent gases, fresh gases, I don't care. Just straight out the exhaust. Until bottom dead center, maybe a little bit later, that uh, rotary valve closes. When we feel we have expelled all the spent gases, the rotary valve is closed, the blower is pressurizing all the ducts and also the cylinder. Until those transfers and the exhaust ports close. I'm not the best at explaining and this might be confusing, but I really think this, you know, three years ago when I said that retained ring would uh, revolutionize two strokes. Well, maybe not, but this, I think this can really revolutionize two strokes, at least make a lot more power than, uh, than any other conventional two stroke. Yeah, I've ordered the blower. I will design a proper cylinder, which will be possible to machine on a three axis machine, maybe in three sections. And uh, and yeah, my plan is to get a working prototype fast, not spend three years <laughs> working on it. And this will use normal pistons, normal piston rings, nothing fancy at all. So it should be much easier to get uh, get along with. This does not mean the end of uh, that other engine and cylinder. This is something else, but we will continue both things at the same time and other things. I won't be able to do much in the garage this week because we're getting all the electricity in the house and uh, and also the garage fixed. And uh, I'm trying to do everything I can do without insurance trouble. You can't really do much electricity work in Norway without uh, losing insurance coverage. But I'm doing all the things that I can do. I'm spending my time doing that. Gotta get it fixed. It's kind of a death trap, this house. <laughs> Has been for eight years now. <laughs> so gotta get that done. Okay, I'm pretty stoked about this design. I really think I'm 
I really think I'm onto something here. Let's hope some of the big manufacturers steals this. And uh, you know where it came from. Thanks for watching.